Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to what may seem like a very clickbaity episode of Stable Diffusion for Professional Creatives. And, well, let me tell you that as a fashion photographer by trade, I would love for this all to be clickbait, but I will show you how we can get from the shot on the left that is shot on an iPhone to the shot on the middle left here, where we get a new background, to the shot on the middle right here, where we get a really late picture, to a final shot on the right, where we get a really late picture with a new background and we keep the fine details, such as the text here, all with one click. This is the workflow that we'll be looking at today. Now, I already hear you. Where's the workflow? Well, the workflow is in the description below. You can download it and you can find every model you need as well as any custom notes you need in the description below, same as always. But since this is not an easy to use workflow, please bear with me for a sec while I go through all of it and explain it to you. If you don't want to do that, there's plenty of notes that I left there. So suit yourself but don't come back crying when you use the wrong model inside of the IC Light group. I am sure that most of you by now are familiar with IC Light, something that came out a few weeks ago and helps us relight pictures. If you followed all my videos from the previous week, you are kind of familiar with this workflow, at least with the part up here. I presented this workflow last Monday and it was basically a way to relight a product image, something that I felt like would be a game changer in product photography. Then during a live mid last week, I was challenged by a viewer to keep the finer details, in his case that was a bottle of whiskey, and preserve them in the final generation. During that live stream I said that a good way to do it would be to use a frequency separation technique in Photoshop so that we wouldn't need to spend any time in Comfy UI doing weird things in order to get to the same result. Well, what changed then during these last few days? During the weekend, a Reddit user, PowerJJ, posted on Reddit a solution for implementing the frequency separation technique inside of ConfUI natively. Now, I got into talk with them and with their help, we managed to find a solution to integrate the details from the original picture into the generated and relit picture all inside of ConfUI. If you look at the results here side by side, we can see that the one on the left is the one that we were having right before we could implement a frequency separation technique directly inside of ConfUI, and the one on the right is the one that we are getting now with the frequency separation technique inside of ConfUI. All the text detail is much better, as well as any other detail really, and more importantly, it is the same product that we are trying to sell to potential customers. This is invaluable, of course, in product photography where you're not selling a 90% replica, pun kind of unintended, but it works so, of the product you're trying to sell, but you need to sell the actual product. The ability to have coherent lighting and the ability to have the actual product in your shots were some of the major obstacles up until now in generative AI in production environments. And during this weekend, we blew them out of the water. If you are a photographer, a creative director, an art director, a designer in the photography space and you don't see the potential here and it's not even potential it's actual use cases then I don't know what to tell you because I've had tons of people over on Instagram and I'm talking editors at Vogue asking me what the heck did we just do so pardon my excitement but to me this is a major breakthrough but let's not get ahead of ourselves and actually try to understand what's going on in this workflow that I developed let's start from the beginning what we're starting here with in the top left corner is an iPhone shot of a product and a very bad shot at that. And it gets then resized to 1024 by 1024. Here in the top center slash right, we have a group that is currently not working, that is generating a product from scratch. We don't need that since we're not generating products that don't exist, but I left that just in case you want to test, you don't have any shots that you want to work with. Then right below, we have three different groups. The background generator group here generates a new background based on a prompt and it uses the depth and the line art of the original image. Now, why the line art you say, wouldn't the depth just be enough? Well, I've found that in some cases with transparent stuff, it's better to have some line art as well. You can disable that if you don't want to use that. After the background gets generated, it gets passed onto a blend original subject on top of a background group. This group merges the original subject of the original picture on top of the generated background. 
and it does that by employing a segment anything group. In my case, I have to specify that I want a bottle here, because a bottle is the subject of my picture. Now, the merge picture would be rather bad, at least for product photography standard. And this is kind of the point that we were at, at least a month ago. We could get good enough shots, but they were not convincing because of lighting and because the subject looked like it was a bit copy-pasted on top. But what we can now do with IC light, which is a fantastic piece of tech, I'm not even kidding, I think it's the best thing to come to Generative AI since Laura's, we can relight the picture that we just generated. Let's see how it works. In this relight group, we are sourcing the resulting image, that is the blend of the original image and the new background. Then we are sourcing the mask that we get from the white spots. Then we are relighting the image by using those white areas in the generated image as sources of light. Now this is not always great, so what we can do instead is use this load images mask node, which is right now bypassed, and link it up to the grow mask with blur node. And it would still kind of be a one-click solution, but I wanted to have everything kind of work together without the need of any external help. The image gets relit now, but the details, they're not great. So this relit picture gets passed through an optional preserved details, such as words from the original image group. Now that's a catchy name, I know, but I needed it to be kind of self-explanatory because I don't know who's going to try their hand at this workflow, so the more notes and the easier to understand, the better, I guess. And what this note does, and bear with me because it gets a bit mathematical and convoluted, is one thing only, really. In this green subgroup of notes in the top left corner, it prepares the mask from the segment anything group for later use. Then. It uses frequency separation technique, which is a technique to separate a high frequency layer, which takes care of details, and a low frequency layer, which takes care of color and lighting, and separates them into two different layers. And it uses that technique on the original image, which you can see the results here, and the relit image, where you can see the results here. And it does all that based on some maths that work in most cases, but your mileage may vary, so you might need to fix things up a bit, such as blur radius, for example, because you might need to retain some details that are finer than the details that I'm working with. So in case it's not working perfectly for you, you have to tinker around with it. And then the last step that we developed through the weekend that needs to be done is creating a high frequency layer that is a blend of the high frequency layer from the original image and the one from the relit image and it's a very precise blend because the blend that we want is one that has all the details of the original subject only and everything but the details of the generated subject and how do we do that well we use the mask from the segment anything group that we prepared over here as a mask for an image blend by mask node that is taken in as sources, both of the high frequency layers. Then the only thing we need to do is just use the resulting high frequency layer, which is the blend of the two previous high frequency layers, and merge it on top of the low frequency layer from the generated relit image. And here we have the result. Hoping that you're still following me and you're not seeing this as the rambling of an old man. Now to demonstrate that all of this works and I am not just making things up and I'm not cherry picking images. I am going to get this image of a Gucci bag over here and I'm gonna change the prompt to of a Gucci bag on the water. Copy that prompt over here in the positive prompt for the relight group and then change the prompt from bottle to bag inside of the ground in dino node and I'm gonna hit Q prompt, speed things up maybe a little and sit in silence without cutting anything. And there we go. The background might be just a bit better, so, and you know this is not cherry picked because the image is not that great, but the details have been preserved, the light has been changed, and everything is working great. We even got a tiny reflection here in the smudge of water that we have here.
Now I'm gonna try again with different things. I am gonna cut to the results so that you don't have to actually wait. You already know that I'm not cherry picking. And let's go with a very bad picture of a microphone taken with my iPhone. So let's change the prompt to advertising photography of a microphone in front of a swirly color background. Let's copy that, put that in the positive prompt for the relight group. Let's change from white light to neon light. And let's change the prompt for the grounding dyno node from bag to microphone. And let's hit Q prompt. As you can see here, the grounding dyno group hasn't taken into consideration the arm that is holding up the microphone. So I might expect a something changing in the arm, but we are going to focus on the mic. Here we got the new background and the arm has actually been changed. Now we got the relight and here we get the pre-served details with the relight. All automatically done, all with one click. It's completely insane to me. Now if you want to test it yourself, there's the workflow in the description below as well as all the models you need. And in the next segment, I'll be talking about how this works a bit more in detail. So if you're not interested in all that mumbo jumbo, you can just skip ahead to my conclusions and I won't hold you accountable for that. I have put a lot of notes into this workflow. So if you read them carefully, I don't think there's any way in which you can mess up. So let's address how it all starts. This workflow right now is working at 1024 by 1024. Because since I see light only works with 1.5, I feel like this is the resolution that gets the best detail while still working kind of well. If we want to upscale, we should probably do that later. So if you want to add an upscaling group, I feel like you should do that later. More specifically, in between the relight group and the frequency separation for keeping the details group. Now, in that case, you would need to resize the mask from the segment anything node as well that is being used in order to blend the two high frequency paths together. So keep that in mind as well. Otherwise, those high frequency paths will be masked with a mask that is only 1024 by 1024 and you don't want that. Another thing that we have to take into consideration is the fact that the segment anything group has some limits to it. Like in this case, if we wanted to get the whole mic with the arm as well, we might need to tinker around with the prompt a bit and we might also not get there ever. So for complex scenes, so for complex scenes, you might need more than one segment anything group, but for easy enough scenes where the subject is very clear and it's just one or two, you can get away with just one segment anything group. Then there's the matter of this being a one click solution. There are better ways to achieve better results by tinkering around and not making it just a one click solution. In fact, I have provided you with options inside this workflow as well. And that's why some of the preview images nodes are not preview images, they are preview bridges. For example, if we don't want to have a mask that realizes the image that is being sourced from the white areas inside of the generated background image, which is this one, what we could do is just open in mask editor and then add the kind of lighting that we want by drawing a mask inside of the preview bridge node. What we would then just need to do is swap this mask from color node for the mask coming out of the preview bridge image node. So hooking up this mask over here with the grow mask with blur input over here. And we would have a lot more control over how the light behaves. Now the light wouldn't be as organic as the one that's coming from the background, but we could actually direct it in a way that is actionable by us. Another thing that we could do is just load up a mask that we want and use that as a source of lightning. So for example, if we only want strip lights coming from the sides, what we could do is just create a strip light kind of mask and use that instead. Another thing that we could do that could allow us to have more control would be to drop this segment anything mask that we are using to automate everything as the source of finer details and instead draw ourselves on top of the details that we want to preserve on the relit image 
with the mask editor. So in this case, we would want to go over the inputs here and the texture over here of the microphone head. Then this group of nodes here would take care of preparing the mask and what we would need to do would be just to hook up this convert mask to image image output into the image blend by mask mask input. And it's gonna be substituting the mask from the segment anything group. So if we hit Q prompt, you can see that it's taking into consideration only the parts that we use it over here. The last thing that you want to be wary of is that although I tested this with a lot of different images and it kind of works every time, would be that the math here in the frequency separation groups is set for the average use case. If your original picture is far from being average for lighting conditions or kind of details you have, or you want to keep more details around, for example, you might need to tinker around with the math here, which would mostly involve tinkering around with the image Gaussian blur radius. All of this is basically an approximation from what Photoshop does when you're using a frequency separation technique. So if you're already familiar with that, you know how that works. But if you want to keep finer details, basically what you want to do is lower the radius a bit. And if you want to keep less details around, you want to up the radius a bit. All of these values have to be the same for every group, otherwise it won't work. Obviously this workflow works with shots that are not being taken by a phone as well, and better shots, of course. So if we load up a good product shot of a whiskey bottle here, change the prompt a bit to reflect that, so let's say a whiskey bottle on a river, copy that, put that one over here in the relight prompt, and let's say moonlight, let's see what happens. And change the grounding dino node to reflect that we want a bottle as a subject. There we go, we get a very good shot with just one click. So product photographers, not everything's over yet. Starting from a better studio shot definitely gets you better results. But what amazes me really is the organic progression that we get from the starting shot here, top left, the re-background generation, the blended generation, the relit generation, and the detail preservation generation. To me, this is completely insane. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Does it work with people too? Yes, it does. But I need some more time for testing. And why is that? Well, that's because for harsh lighting condition, the high frequency layers keep a lot of shadow and light information in them. So I need to tinker with things around before I can actually feel like I can release a good working workflow for people as well. So what can I say about this? Well, for starters, I'm kind of sorry I can guide you through all of the process of building things up, but that's because these workflows have become so complex that if I start from scratch, this video would take like 40 minutes. If you wanna see more about how we came to this, you can look at the live that I've been linking here. And that's like a two hours live where I explain my train of thoughts. So if you're into that kind of thing, go watch that. And well, as far as tech goes, I don't know right now if this is even better than Laura's are. Laura's are amazing, don't get me wrong, but this solves so many issues that are actually usable in the real world. Yes, Laura's may solve an issue, but they're not one-click solutions. Whereas this, this is a one-click solution to location shoots or complex studio shoots. If I were a photographer, and I am, I would be really worried about this. Or I could get really excited and get to know the tech better and use it. So I guess the choice is yours. So I hope you get to try it out. I hope you get to have some fun with it. I hope you break things because I would like to hear some feedback on it. And once again, thanks to PowerJJ over on Reddit who developed this group of notes for frequency separation techniques. And well, that's it for today. If you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe. My name is Andre Bayoni. You can find me on Instagram at Rizunobushi or on the web at andrebayoni.com. And same as always, I'll be seeing you next week, scared and confused about what's real anymore.